In this video, we're going to examine the face draft command for Autodesk Inventor. Now, if you're going to draft a face, you might be currently creating an extrusion and you're tapering it. And the disadvantage there is when you perform a taper, it drafts all faces around an extrusion. Now with the face draft command, we can specify individual or maybe a few faces that we would like to add taper or draft to around our design. This also might be a command that you use later on downstream on your modeling tree and not something done very early in the design, but perhaps a little bit later. Now we have multiple ways we can define our face draft. We can do it with a fixed edge, we can do it with a fixed plane, and we can also do it with a parting line option. So let's jump in and examine the tool and how to utilize it. Up on our modify panel, we have a flyout that is the shell and the draft together. So if your shell is on the top button, make sure you hit that fly out and then grab draft. If draft is your top button, by all means, go ahead and select it there. But that's where you start your draft command. And as you can see, it utilizes both methods of interaction. We have the dialog box as well as the mini toolbar that's showing up on the right hand side. And we can go through here and select our same selections from either side. So the first thing we want to decide on is what type of face draft we would like to create. I like using the mini toolbar, so I'll do that over here. As you can see, I can pick those three methods. I'm going to start with fixed edge. The next selection that we need to make is our pull direction. Now the pull direction is a synonymous term you might find with the idea of molding components and having a pull direction for a mold. Now if you're unfamiliar with pull direction, you might have a fair share of trial and error as you go through this command, trying to get your face draft created the way you exactly want it to. So let's do an example here to see if we can't alleviate some of those problems you might have with understanding this. For the pull direction on this part, I'm going to choose this face. Now with that face selected, for the pull direction, I now need to specify which faces to draft based on that pull direction from the mold. So this is a very, very critical element of this command. You have to be very careful for which face you select on, not only the amount of faces, but also the location of where you select. To give you an example, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and just rotate up. If I put my cursor right here for selection and select it by my left mouse button, what will happen is it will create that as my fixed edge on the backhand side. Now I'm going to hold down shift and deselect that face. Now I'm going to select the same face again, but this time I'm going to select closer to this edge over here. And now you can see the fixed edge is on the other side of the face. So you have to be very careful when you're doing a fixed edge draft, which side of a face you select. The closest edge you pick to will become the fixed edge. Now, the next thing we need to take a look at is what amount of taper we would like to add. So we can grab on the arrow, much like I was doing here, to show the drafting taking place. Or I can type it in, in the input box on the toolbar. Now, I want you to also notice that I had picked one face, but it picked on the tangent face here and the tangent face on the bottom. So that's known as my automatic face chain that we see selected here as well. Now, I'm pretty happy with the 10 degrees here that we have for this draft. So I'll go ahead and choose my OK button here to approve that. Now, as we examine this, you can see it drafted those three faces but it did not draft this back face because that was not selected. I'm going to perform an undo by right clicking and we'll start the command again. This time I'm going to choose a fixed plane option. I'm going to rotate my model up here a little bit and we're going to take a look at how the fixed plane sort of differs from the fixed edge. As you can see, I have multiple planes on this. I have a tangent plane at the top. I have an offset plane below. I also have one of my origin planes on the middle of that part. And that's the one we're going to begin with. So with the fixed plane method chosen for the draft, I'll choose this as my fixed plane. Now I need to choose which faces I would like. So I'll choose this face out here. If I go to a side view by using my view cube, you can see it's keeping that point right there that interacts with that plane static and it basically drafts around that fixed plane. So as I move my cursor back and forth, you can see how that keeps that nice and steady there at that plane. Now if I'd like to change my fixed plane method, I can go here to my pull down, 
go to the fixed plane selection and choose a different one like this one at the top. And this time, you can see it's drafting out in that orientation. It's keeping that top fixed plane nice and steady for me. I'm going to choose my fixed plane option again, this time choosing the bottom. So now when I do my draft, you can see how that differs that as well. Let me zoom in a little bit. I do the fixed plane one more time, and this time grabbing this plane that is offset from the bottom face. And what you really need to take a look at here is it's actually adding material based on an extrapolation of this face going down to that plane. You actually get to see a nice little preview there of these dashed lines. So it's adding a little bit of thickness right here where my cursor is. And as I pull that draft out, you can see that definitely exaggerates that even more. So here I'll finalize it by pulling it out about 20 degrees and approving that. Next, we'll jump over to Face Draft 2, which is also in our working files directory. And here we're going to take a look at a parting line draft. Now, this is important if you have a part that drafts in two directions off a neutral axis of some kind, or maybe a slightly offset axis or plane. So here I have a part, and in the middle of this, I have a work plane. The extra step you have to take with this particular face draft is you have to create a sketch for it to reference as the parting line. So I'm going to pick on this plane and choose Create Sketch. I'll use F7 on my keyboard to slice my graphics. And just to project all my geometry that's being cut here, I'll use my Project Cut Edges option that's a fly up from Project Geometry. So it gives me all those edges without me having to go through and pick each one. I'll finish my sketch because really that's all I needed. And I'll go to my draft command. I'll choose the parting line option, specify my pull direction. My parting line needs to be selected, which is this outer curve. And now I need to pick the faces. Well, this will be all the faces going around. Now everything here is tangent, so I will need to select each one. From here, I can then specify how I want my draft to occur. As you can see, currently it's two and a half degrees as I look at my preview arrow there. Let's up this to about five. You can see a little bit more draft taking place on both sides of that parting line. Well, what if I had five degrees on one side, but seven and a half or maybe three degrees on the other side? Well, you can change your options here for your draft to be symmetric or asymmetric. So right now we do have symmetric chosen. I'm gonna choose asymmetric, and that way I can pick on the second arrow and change it to something else. So I'll change that one to three degrees. So I have three on one side and five on the other. I'll approve that. And here I have my parting line draft that is drafting both ways from that parting line outwards based on my pull direction. And I have two different draft values on either side.